The big push of the keynote address by Apple CEO Steve Jobs was, of course, the new toys and gadgets Apple Computer is putting out there. With the advent of the YouTube culture, people are getting addicted to the concept of digital video and all the good and bad side effects that come with it. One upside of digital video is, of course, portability. But the more online video there is to download and watch, the more we might rather watch our computer video on our TV screen. Thus, the Apple TV. It's a product that seems similar in appearance and in interface to the TiVos or DVRs from cable companies many of us are used to. Though this product also permits digitally downloaded movies and music to go from your Apple computer to your big screen TV, and it's wireless. Back the connectors to refresh ourselves. We have a power connector, USB 2, and Ethernet. We have Wi-Fi wireless networking built in, and then we have ways to get video out. An HDMI connector, which is digital audio and video, or component video and analog and digital audio, right? All out the back. Most people, however, will just use these three. They'll plug it in. There's no power brick necessary, and they'll hook up an HDMI cable to their widescreen TV, and they'll use wireless networking to get their content. So it's really, really easy to use. The Apple TV, a new product hitting store shelves next month. The cost is around $299. But one of the biggest new toys unveiled at MacWorld, the expo in San Francisco, was targeted at those of us that have too many gadgets: an iPod, cell phone, and a Palm Pilot. The problem with them is really sort of in the bottom 40. There, it's, it's this stuff right here. They all have these keyboards that are there whether you need them or not to be there, and they all have these control buttons. That are fixed in plastic and are the same for every application. Well, every application wants a slightly different user interface. Well, what we're going to do is get rid of all these buttons and just make a giant screen. <laughs> Yes, the widescreen was one feature of the new phone that clearly the crowd was enamored with. But perhaps a bigger development is actually what replaces those tiny cell phone keyboards. It is not the usual stylus pen. It's a pointing device that we're all born with. We're born with ten of them. We use our fingers. We're going to touch this with our fingers, and we have invented a new technology called multi-touch, which is phenomenal. It works like magic. <laughs> you don't need a stylus. It's far more accurate than any touch display that's ever been shipped. It ignores unintended touches. It's super smart. You can do multi-finger gestures on it. And during his speech, Jobs reported on the success of Apple's iTunes Music Store, the one that works with the iPod players. He also took time to share with the crowd Apple's iPod market share compared to other player manufacturers like Microsoft's Zune. And they garnered two percent market share. Two percent market share.、Uh, iPod had 62 percent market share, and the rest had 36. No matter how you try to spin this,、um, what can you say? <laughs> Jobs added, iTunes has surpassed Amazon.com in music sales, having sold over two billion songs on its site, and is close behind Walmart, Best Buy, and Target in music retail sales as well. As if all that weren't enough, Apple also announced a name change from Apple Computer Incorporated to just Apple Incorporated. Perhaps a sign that the powers that be are predicting a move away from simpler computers towards something a bit more comprehensive. With Michael Rush and videographer Chris Mason, I'm Sebastian Kuhns in San Francisco.